Hey guys, I'm back with another video. If you remember my last project, it was my son's full-size modern bed. Well, now he wants a dresser to match. He had two requests. He wanted drawers for his clothes and a spot to store his game consoles. So I got busy and designed him the perfect modern six drawer dresser to match his bed. So that's enough talking, let's get to building. So I've ripped all of my plywood down and I've ripped all of my two by boards down. So I'm ready to start building. And the first thing that I'm going to build is the cabinet frame. And that is three quarter inch plywood. I'm starting with the outside, the top and the bottom and the middle dividers. These are the two middle dividers. I'm gonna put cleats on them before I build the cabinet. And I've drilled three quarter inch pocket holes at the top and bottom of each of these vertical cabinet pieces. And I've also ripped from one by four, these cleats, they're two and a half inches wide. I just picked that because I needed three quarter inch trim ripped for the front of the shelves. So this worked out, I only had to buy one board for each one. There's gonna be three cleats on the two middle dividers and I'm gonna attach the first two and leave the bottom one until after I attach the dividers to the cabinet because I'm not going to be able to access those pocket holes if I put that on right now. So now I am marking exactly where to put these cleats and the reason I have the cleats is because the face frame on those middle dividers is two inches wide and the drawers will not open and shut without hitting that frame if they don't have a cleat inside of it. So I'm measuring from the bottom up I'm going to do it on both sides and you can get these measurements from the free printable plans. I will link them in the description box below. So I'm attaching these cleats with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. And we get so many questions about our glue box. We get these on Amazon and it makes applying the glue so much easier. You just squeeze it and it can apply the glue when it's straight up and down. It's great for building. So I will link that in the description box below also. I've got that one done. I'm going to move to the next one. Now I'm going to attach the sides and these middle pieces to the bottom of the cabinet. So I'm marking right now where I'm going to put the two middle dividers and it's 21 and a quarter. Again, you don't have to remember that because they are on the free printable plans. Okay, and when you're attaching this, you want to make sure that your pocket holes are facing the outside of the cabinet on these middle dividers because the opening in the middle, it's going to be open right here and you're going to see those pocket holes so you have to fill them because they're not going to look very good. If you put them on the drawer side, you won't see them. And also make sure that it's right side up so that your cleats aren't backwards. I usually put something on backwards or upside down every build. And I'm attaching these vertical plywood pieces with wood glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Another thing I always mess up on, I make my mark where I'm supposed to attach the board and sometimes I'll forget which side of the mark the board's supposed to go on. So that's something that you should think about when you're building saves from headaches. I'm like sitting here questioning if I did it the right way still. I think I did, but I will double check my measurements to make sure so I don't have to take the whole thing apart once I get it built. Yep. Yep. Okay, now for the side pieces, these are the exact same size. I also drilled three quarter inch pocket holes on each end. 
And these are gonna go poke holes facing in, obviously, so you don't see them. And I'm attaching them with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws and wood glue, just like the middle dividers. Okay, this part's done. Now I need to go back and add those bottom cleats really quick. So the bottom cleats are three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the cabinet. So I'm just gonna use a scrap three quarter inch board instead of marking it, it'll make it easier. Okay, and that's that bottom cleat I'm attaching the exact same way with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. All the cleats are on now, and the final step in building this cabinet is to attach the top. And I've already ripped the top down with my table saw. And actually, I'm gonna flip that upside down right now so that I can mark where to attach those middle dividers. And I know that's 21 and a quarter, so I'm gonna mark 21 and a quarter on the bottom side. So I've got that marked, and there's gonna be an overhang on the front and the back of one and a half inches, and then a three quarter inch overhang on each side. So I'm gonna lay the top upside down on the floor, and I'm gonna flip the cabinet base upside down, <clears throat> upside down on top of it. Okay, I've got everything marked and now I'm attaching the top to the vertical dividers with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Okay, so I've got the main cabinet frame done. Now I just need to add the two shelves in the middle and then move on to the face frame. So I've already marked where I'm going to place these shelves and I decided to add doors to the front to hide all the junk. So I am going to set these back a quarter of an inch to a lot for those doors. I'm attaching these shelves with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. Okay, so I'm using my Craig right angle clamp and it is so great for this top shelf because it's not really holding in place between the two middle dividers so it kind of acts like a second hand while I'm attaching the other side of this and I will link this in the description box below. and they're really handy to have one or two in your shop. Okay, so now I'm flipping the cabinet right side up and I'm gonna start to measure for the face frame trim. Now the face frame is just two by fours that I ripped down to two by twos. Two by twos are pretty pricey if you buy pine and it's a lot cheaper if you get a two by four and rip it down. And on the face frames, I like to measure and cut as I go, that's why I haven't done it yet. So I am gonna measure for this one, cut it, build this face frame, and then build the second. So right now what I'm doing is dry fitting everything. So I'm measuring for all my cuts, I'm cutting them, laying them on the face frame and making sure they dry fit. Then I'll drill the pocket holes and attach the whole thing. All right, everything seems to fit great, so now I'm gonna take these vertical trim pieces and drill one and a half inch pocket holes at both ends so that I can get this face frame attached. Okay, so I just wanna show y'all the new Craig Jig 720 Pro. This thing is amazing. If, if you have a K5 or a K4, you'll be blown away at how efficient they've made the Craig Jig as if it couldn't be efficient enough. So my favorite part is the self-adjusting clamp. I've got one and a half inch lumber, no adjustments made, lock it into place. And the drill bit that comes with it actually has a finder window on the side. So it makes it really easy to adjust your collar on your drill bit. This is one and a half inch lumber. I'm locking it in place right there. Putting it in my drill. And pocket hole. Now, 
What's really, really cool is we've got that one and a half inch lumber drilled already. What if I wanna to switch to three quarter inch lumber, slide into place, no adjustments made, lock it into place. So much faster. So pocket holes are made, that was super simple. I will link to the Craig 720 Pro in the description box below, as well as a full video review and a how-to tutorial that Whitney and I shot for you guys on the 720 Pro in the description box below. So now I'm gonna attach all the pieces together and then I can measure and cut for those cross pieces. So I'm starting with the outside pieces because those are easy, they'll be flush, and I'm attaching them with two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. I will also link to our favorite glue bot in the description box below. This guy is super affordable and it makes applying wood glue so easy. Okay, so I've got the side pieces on and I'm just lining it up so that I can mark where I need to put these middle pieces. So I'm applying wood glue to the front of the console and I'm going to attach the face frame with two inch brad nails from the front of the face frame into the cabinet. Now I'm just attaching the top to that top of the face frame. Alright, it's looking good. Now I'm going to add the cross pieces in between. Okay, front frame is done, back frame is done. Okay, now it's time for the trim. Okay, so I'm working on the side trim now, and the side trim is just one by two that I ripped from one by fours because it's cheaper to do that. And I'm attaching them to the side of the cabinet. Let me show you. So I'm attaching them to the side of the cabinet right here between the trim, and I'm gonna use wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. I'm gonna add it here and here. It's just a little rubber mallet. I will link to it in the description box below, but it's so perfect for getting these pieces into tight spaces. Okay, side trim is done. It's looking really great. Now I'm gonna work on the drawers. All right, so now I'm going to assemble the drawers and I've already cut all of the plywood for the drawers. These are half inch plywood pieces and I ripped them down according to the plans. And I'm just gonna build these drawers with one and a quarter inch brad nails and wood glue. All right, so I am gonna assemble the drawers right now and the drawers I designed with half inch plywood and I've already cut all of my pieces to size and I ripped the half inch plywood at six inches wide and I've got two short pieces and two long pieces for each drawer. I'm assembling them with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. I'm going to start by assembling the box and then I'll attach the bottom. So the front and back are the long pieces and the short pieces are the sides. So I'm running a line of wood glue. It's like the easiest way to make drawers, by the way. Gluing and nailing. Okay, first drawer down. Now I've got five more to go and they're gonna be built the exact same way. I just cut all the bottoms for the drawers and 
The bottoms are quarter inch plywood that I ripped to size. You can have the hardware store do that for you or do it at home on your table saw or with your Craig Rip Fit. And this part's super simple. I'm just running a line of wood glue on the bottom of the drawer frame, laying the quarter inch plywood on top, and I'm gonna follow up with one and a quarter inch fragments. Drawers are done. And now it's time to add the drawer slides. So the drawer slides that I'm using are 16 inch drawer slides. These are silent clothes. They're my favorite. They're very easy to install. I ordered them on Amazon and I will add a link in the description box below. And what I'm doing is I want my drawers to be flush with the face frame. I know my drawer faces are going to be three quarter inches, so I am using this scrap piece of three quarter inch wood and I'm making a mark at the top of each horizontal face frame piece. And that way I know that I'm going to put, I'm going to install my drawer slide right there. So my drawer will stop there and then I'll have the face frame right in front of that. And this is the easiest way that I found to install drawer slides. I used to dread them, but I kind of figured out the easiest way for me to do it. These drawer slides come apart. So you want to take this part off of this part. This is the part that's going to go on the inside of the cabinet. This long piece right here will go on the drawers and the blue piece at the stop at the back, that'll go at the back of the cabinet. So to take this piece off, you'll open it up and on the back side, there's this little black lever. Push that and you can pull the whole piece out. And then this is the part that you will attach inside of the cabinet. So the part that I'm gonna line up with that line that I drew with that scrap piece is gonna be this part right here. And then I like to use a pencil and mark where I'm gonna put the screws. And I usually just put one at the front and one at the back. You can see I put one mark here for one screw and then the back of these have two different holes. So I put one mark for each one. So one thing I also do so I always have a level for this part. This side is easy because I have those cleats on the inside of the cabinet, but on the outside walls, I don't. This level is my favorite because it's magnetic. It's great for drawer slides. It comes in a pack of three, and I also got that on Amazon. I will also add a link in the description box below for that. I'm just gonna do the same thing. Mark for my screws, making sure it's level. So I'm just gonna mark that one, that front hole, and then when I get this inside, or this outside drawer slide attached, I will use the level and make sure that I mark the holes in the right spot. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to have when you're doing the drawer slides is a tiny drill bit. So after I make those marks, I just use my drill bit and just pre-drill a tiny little pilot hole and that way the screws go in a lot easier and it saves you from serious headaches. And drilling the pilot holes is really gonna save you headache because these screws that come with these drawer slides, really any drawer slide of any brand that I've used, they're not great and they strip pretty easy. So the pilot holes just makes it, it takes a little bit of extra time but it will save you such a hassle. So typically I would just install all of the cabinet parts of the drawer slides and then go back and do the drawers. But since I'm showing you how to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and add one drawer. Now, when you do drawers, if you're, not, if you're doing your own plans and you're doing a set of drawers, you always want to allow for half an inch for each drawer slide. So you're gonna take an inch off of the width of the drawer when you're designing it. See, that's a perfect fit right there. 
So I always get confused how these go in as to where they need to be on the drawer. And I know that I want the drawer slides to be at the very front of these drawers. So I'm just gonna take that out and leave it there so I know where it goes. So I'm lining this drawer slide up to where the front of it is at the front of the drawer and it's gonna be flush with the bottom. I'm gonna mark a front hole and a back hole had too much coffee this morning, my hands are shaking. And same process, I'm gonna drill the pilot holes. Now I'm gonna flip it around and attach the second one. And I know that front is gonna line up with the front of the drawer. And it's gonna be flush with the bottom. That's easy, no measurement needed. Okay, so I'm gonna try this on for size. I gotta push it to get it going at the beginning. And here we go. Perfect fit. And we are flush. Okay, that's a perfect fit. So now I'm going to attach the rest of the drawer slides and get those drawers in. the drawer faces. The drawer faces I am using three quarter inch plywood for. You can use pine board, some other kind of hardwood if you'd like. I decided to go with plywood because it's very smooth. It will stain the same way as the majority of the cabinet. And because I did these drawers inset, you're not gonna see the rough edges on the plywood. So I just went ahead and decided to do that. Now, I've already cut these down to size, and on your drawer faces, you're going to want about an eighth of an inch around the perimeter of each drawer face so that it can slide in and out with the drawer. So for spacing, I've got two, two scrap pieces. These are one eighth of an inch thick, and I'm just going to put those right here on the bottom of the bottom face frame and then I'm going to set that on top of it and I always just eyeball the side spacing I kind of use my nails and make sure it's center so that's how I'm going to space each drawer face so I'm get some glue and I'm using one inch brad nails for this and I'll show you another trick so you put a bunch of wood glue actually we'll put the wood glue here so got the wood glue on the backing on this, I'm leaving off. I am gonna make it optional if you'd like it. I chose not to use the quarter inch backing because you're not gonna see it. It's gonna be against a wall. If you are doing the backing, make sure that you do it at the very end of your build so that you can access the drawer still because you'll see when I put this drawer face on and get it centered up, I'm gonna to have to attach it and to get it out after you've attached the face frame makes it really hard, but if that back is open, you can push it from the backside. I've wanted that the hard way many times. So I'm gonna space it out, get it where I want it, and then I'm just gonna shoot. I know I'm gonna use bar pulls for this cabinet, so those are gonna go about right here. So I like to just shoot one nail through the center, keep it in place, I'll probably do two. And then push it from the back side. Get a clamp, hold it in place, and then I shoot the rest of the nails from the inside and that way you don't have a bunch of nail holes to cover. Now I'm using one inch nails for this. You need to make sure that you don't use one and a quarter inch because we do have half inch plywood for the drawers and three quarter inch from the, for the faces. So your nails may pop through a bit if you use one and a quarter inch. 
the clamp is great because a lot of times the plywood will try to push away from the drawer itself, so that keeps it nice and tight while you're nailing it. Put that back in place. Super easy. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with all the drawers. And I will add a link in the description box below for these bar clamps. And also, I am going to be staining this piece. So I'm making sure that I pick the pretty side of the plywood. Drawer faces are done. Now I'm going to build the doors and then I need to trim it. All right, I've made all of my cuts for the doors and the doors are gonna be backed with quarter inch plywood that I've ripped to size and one by twos. I ripped these one by twos from scrap one by fours. It's a lot cheaper that way. And I've already drilled three quarter inch pocket holes at both ends of the vertical boards for each door. So I'm building the frames first and I'm building them with wood glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. So when I initially designed this cabinet, I was gonna leave the middle open, but it's gonna be for my son and he's gonna put his game consoles underneath this part right here. So I decided to add some doors to hide the junk. I'm sure my future self will appreciate that very soon. And you can get creative with this door. I'm doing a basic shaker style just with the one by two frame and the plywood, but you can add a design to it if you want. We've done several doors like that with cool designs on them. Now to attach the backing, I'm running wood glue along the back side of the frame and I'm going to put the pretty side facing down. Now I'm attaching the plywood to the frame with 5 8 inch brad nails. You want to make sure you don't go any longer than that because this plywood is only quarter inch thick. If you have a stapler, you can also use a stapler, but attaching from the back side of the plywood into the frame keeps you from having to fill your nail holes. Door one done. Let's check her out. It's going to look so cute. Now I'm going to build the second. cheaper you can buy the three-quarter inch molding at the hardware store but it's expensive and you can make your own if you have a table saw so whatever you want to do so I'm attaching the end pieces with wood glue and one inch nails Now that I've got the two end pieces on, I'm going to measure for the front and the back piece and attach it the same way. Okay, now the entire cabinet's done. I'm going to sand it down, fill my nail holes, give it a stain, and add the legs and the hardware. I love how this dresser turned out. I love that all the drawers worked on the very first try. I love how the modern feet and the hardware really give it a unique custom look and it matches perfectly with that bed. Make sure to subscribe to our videos so you don't miss another build. Happy building! Oh, I forgot the bottom plates. Okay, scratch that, Jeffrey, sorry. 
So I've got all the drawers in slide. Eight. And slide. And I'm gonna flip this right side up so that I can, no I'm not, scratch that. It also has, that's not the right one. Dang it! Why is that not going? All right, so pocket holes are made now. That was super simple. I will link, oh my gosh. Okay, so pop, uh, okay, so pocket, so I've got my short sides right here, and then my longer sides on the front and back. Okay, I've got all, oh, I can't talk to you like that, sorry. 